On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla's annual holiday software update is jam-packed with fantastic new features, and I'll tell you all about them. Plus, the rollout of FSD version 13 has begun, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has been denied his compensation package by a Delaware judge once again, and more. What's happening, friends? Alongside Mine of the Future service dog puppy and a vested up Daisy the Boxer. She has a Holter vest on right now. She's getting one of her regular heart checkups. We're taking a 24-hour look at her heart, make sure everything still looks good. So far, so good. She had an echocardiogram earlier today when this vest was put on. So, so far, so good. Hopefully, we'll get good news on uh, the electrical front with her heart, so I can report back on that next week. Hopefully there will be nothing to report. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I am very grateful to be doing well. I'm back from my family trip over Thanksgiving, and I hope all of you enjoyed the interview with Taylor that I had for you last week. Like I think I mentioned when I was setting that up uh, ahead of that interview, it was supposed to be about 30 minutes. That's what we had booked But it ended up going over an hour, as you heard, because I was having such a great time talking to him, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Personally, I just always find it interesting to hear from either current or former Tesla employees, particularly with those with especially unique roles at the company, like Taylor had. Now, uh, some quick updates just in the world of Tesla before I get into the main story this week, which is most certainly the big holiday software update, which is just chock full of goodness this year. I mean, it usually is, but seems especially so this year. While I was away, Tesla upped the ante on the referral program. It's now $1,000 off a new or inventory Model 3 or Model Y, which really is just putting it back where it was. But then on Cybertruck S and X, it is up to a $2,000 discount if you order with a referral link. So uh, if you are not already a Tesla owner, because if you are and you order a new one, you'll just get that as a loyalty bonus. You're effectively referring yourself. But if you're ordering a Tesla for the first time, use somebody's referral link. Make sure you get that discount. If you'd like to use mine, here's how to do it. In any browser on a mobile or desktop device, just type in ts.la slash Ryan73014, and I'll put that link in the episode description as well. That'll take you to the Tesla website where you can then choose which car you want to buy, S3, XY, or Cybertruck, or an existing new inventory vehicle, and it'll take you to that page. Configure the car how you want, order it, and you'll see that the referral discount is baked in there. All right. My first reaction, by the way, to uh, to that upping of the ante on the referral discount was that, well, Tesla maybe then must not be tracking quite well towards its production and delivery goal for this quarter. And as a reminder, they need an all-time record quarter in order to make their 1.8 million cars delivered goal for the year 2024. And it is a goal that it's doable thanks to the Cybertruck being in general production now, whereas in Q4 last year, if we're comparing quarter over quarter, the Cybertruck was effectively not there. There were were a couple hundred Cybertrucks in Q4 of 2023. So then this happened, though, that sort of reestablished my confidence that Tesla is tracking towards their goal, and that is they announced that the 0% APR financing for new Model 3 and Model Y orders in the U.S. will end this week on December 15th. So then maybe they, in fact, are tracking towards it after all, and I certainly hope they are, and I'm doing this, this, I can rarely say this, I'm doing my part by ordering the new Model 3 Performance, which I'm waiting on. I'll give you the update on that later in the show. Uh, While we are on the subject, by the way, of updates to Tesla's buying programs, if you will, Tesla has revised a long-standing policy, and for the better, I think you'll agree, 
And that update is you can now finally choose to keep your Tesla at the end of your lease if you want to. You'll now have the option to buy out your lease at the end of it, the terms of which will obviously vary based on the price of the car and the terms of your lease. You may recall that way back, the reason that Tesla originally gave for not allowing lease buyouts was because Tesla said that they were going to use the cars as robo-taxis in their fleet when they took those cars back. Certainly, the timeline on the robo-taxi thing has been pushed out further than Tesla's original optimistic estimates, and honestly, circumstances are just different now, right? Business needs change, what have you. The bottom line, though, is that I'm just happy for Tesla customers to have another option available to them. You've heard me say it a million times. It is always a good thing for the consumer to have more choices. So I approve of this change from Tesla. Not that they needed my approval. Next up this week, the main story. Buckle up, by the way, because there's a lot to go over here. Tesla has announced the details of this year's holiday software update, and there's a lot of good stuff in here. In fact, longtime listeners of this podcast will even recognize a couple of these items that are in the holiday update because either I've mentioned wanting them and or Ride the Lightning Hotline callers, you folks, have called in to this podcast and requested them. So let's start with maybe one of the biggest features, and that is a Tesla app for your Apple Watch. Yes, you can now use your Apple Watch as a phone key, just like your phone. You can also view the battery charge, the state of charge on the battery. You can open the frunk, and you can turn on the climate control. Now, I've already got this installed. It doesn't quite work yet. You need a vehicle software update to actually take full advantage of all the functionality, but it's right here. It's on my watch. I can at least look at it. I can look at my car, which I've named the Spirit of Adventure, my old Model 3, the one I currently my only one. Uh, so that's sitting here right here on my watch, and it's pretty neat to look at. It makes me feel like Michael Knight from Knight Rider because I can raise my watch and look at my car and Maybe someday Tesla will even update this to allow voice commands through the Apple Watch. That'd be cool. That would really, that would up the Knight Rider factor by, by like threefold. And I would be super on board with that. But if you haven't gotten it, if you're not, if you're, or if you're hearing about this for the first time, all you need to do while you're waiting for the actual holiday software update to your car, that is, is update your main Tesla app on your iPhone, the Tesla iOS app. And then after you do that, you should see the Tesla app on your Apple Watch. A note here, you do need Apple Watch Series 6, which is actually coincidentally and conveniently for me, exactly what I have. I've got a 6. And then you need Watch OS 11 or newer. Now, if I'm being honest about this, while I'm excited about it, I, I will say... I pretty much always have my phone on me because I've been trained to use my phone as the key to my car. So I'm not quite sure how much I'm actually going to use this in the absence of my phone. But I will say there are still plenty of times where I want something out of the car and it's locked down in the garage and I go down there and I go up. Oh, I forgot to bring my phone down here because I'm just lounging around the house, but I am wearing my watch. So I suspect that, at least speaking only for myself, I don't know about all of you, I might end up using this more at home than anywhere else, but even still, it's great to have, and I am very grateful that the Tesla software team made this one happen after many, many years of the community requesting it. This one has been floating out in the ether for some time. And speaking of a long-requested feature, maybe not quite as requested as a watch app, but another feature that's been requested for quite a while that is available as part of this update, Sirius XM support for the Model 3, Model Y, and Cybertruck, because you SNX folks have been uh, already enjoying it for many, many years. So 
As a Sirius XM longtime user, I will say a simple yes, yes, super excited about this one. And in fact, I'm extra excited for it in my new car, and I'll tell you why in a second. But first, I'll open by saying I don't want to give you the whole spiel again since most of you have probably heard it a few times before, but I bought a lifetime subscription to Sirius XM with my last car back in early 2006, and it paid for itself. I've done the math before. It paid for itself a long, long time ago, but... I honestly can say I haven't listened to Sirius XM nearly as much in recent years. I'll listen to the occasional Howard Stern celebrity interview, but not much else beyond that. Because the car, my previous car, my Infiniti G35 Coupe, that was the place that I listened to Sirius XM's music channels. And really, not just the music channels, everything. I would listen to Howard Stern in there, the music channels, you know, whatever was uh, was tickling my fancy at that particular moment whenever I was in the car. So, in my new Model 3 performance, I think I'm going to use this a lot. I'm going to go back to being a, a pretty heavy Sirius XM listener because my new car won't have Slacker Radio in it for free like my old one has, and I'm lucky that, for me, Sirius XM basically is free because I paid the lifetime subscription for it almost a decade ago. And by the way, in case I haven't done this little rap before, I'll say that if you're thinking about checking out Sirius XM for the first time, I'll give you a few quick channel recommendations. I know everybody's music tastes are different, so certainly take these with a grain of salt, but for a little background on me, if you if you haven't already picked up on this from listening over the years, I was born in the 80s, but I came of age in the 90s so I'm very much a 90s rock guy. So on Sirius XM, I love The Spectrum, which is channel 28, and the, they describe it as, which I would say is accurate, classic rock meets new rock. It's a nice mix. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Lithium, which is the 90s alternative and grunge rock station. I like that one a lot, too. That's channel 34. 90s on 9, I'll dip into occasionally. That's just Channel 9, as the name implies. Uh, E Street Radio on Channel 20 for my fellow Bruce Springsteen fans. I like Octane on Channel 37 for Hard Rock. And Dave Matthews Band. I'm a fan. There's a Dave Matthews Band channel. It's called Dave Matthews Band Radio. That's Channel 30 if you are a fellow DMB fan. And you can take a look if my music taste does not align with yours. You can take a look at the full lineup of channels at SiriusXM.com slash channels. They also have, I'll mention, live sports for most of the major sports leagues, too. If you can't be watching something that you're interested in, you can listen to it live on the SiriusXM app in your car now. And and I want to pause for a second here and say that I don't mean for this to sound like an ad for SiriusXM, but I really... I have spent years listening to it, just not as much in recent years since I got my Model 3, but I've definitely spent many, many, many hours. I would say uh, I'll throw one more in, actually. Raw Dog, the stand-up comedy, the uncensored stand-up comedy channel, I believe it's 104, if I remember correctly. I actually forgot to write that one down in my notes. They play bits and sets from stand-up comics. I enjoy that as well. But again, I'm not trying to make this sound like an ad, I mean, if I'm being honest, I'll tell you this. I don't even know what SiriusXM costs these days, but uh, I'm not. So because of that, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's definitely worth it or not. And I guess if I'm being honest about myself, I'm over 40. I'm 44 now. And SiriusXM is it's basically kind of a nice version of the FM radio that I grew up with. So maybe the younger folks listening to this wouldn't like Sirius XM because it's music that's chosen for you by a DJ. Like it's it's curated music rather than an algorithm like like Slacker Radio that's in my Model 3 now, which I love, that's learning what I like and then feeding me more of what I like. So there's maybe a little less personalization to it. But I do, you know, if I'm in a hard rock mood, I can hit that. If I'm in a, you know, 
stand-up comedy mood, I can hit that. So I like Sirius XM, but I do fully recognize that it might only be of interest to those of you out there that are of a certain age, like myself. But anyway, I guess I guess I'll sum up by saying if you miss FM radio, serious because FM radio has basically been dead for years now. If you miss those days of FM radio, Sirius XM's Probably a decent modern substitute for that. And I guess on that note, I will add that on the topic of the value or lack thereof, depending on your opinion of Sirius XM, some good news here is that you will be able to go ahead and decide for yourself without shelling out any money. Drive Tesla Canada says Sirius XM confirmed with us that Tesla Model 3 and Model Y owners in Canada and the US will get a free three-month trial subscription with that 2024 holiday update. I would only ask, why not Cybertruck? Or hopefully Cybertruck's in there and maybe Drive Tesla Canada just didn't ask about the Cybertruck, but I guess I I can't say one way or the other for you Cybertruck owners out there. But give it a try. See what you think. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. The next piece of the holiday software update for 2024 is save dash cam and sentry mode clips to your phone. The description is simply watch dash cam and sentry mode clips directly from the Tesla app and save them to your phone to edit or share. This is huge for peace of mind for somebody like me who's paranoid about anything ever happening to their car. I am Again, I'm I'm definitely I'm talking to a mirror right now. Not literally, just I'm literally talking to my computer monitor, but <laughs> I'm figuratively looking straight into a mirror talking to myself on this one. I will use this regularly, this feature. And it just I love that the car is no longer the only place that I have to view sentry or dash cam clips. Or at least the it's not the first place I have to go to. I can I can grab them off the phone now. That is cool. Next feature in the holiday software update is specific to the 3 Fresh, the new Model 3, auto shift between drive and reverse on stockless Model 3, which is an interesting description. I've never heard Tesla describe it as a stockless Model 3. They've always called it the new Model 3. Interesting that they chose the word stockless. Anyway... Auto shift on stockless Model 3 can now automatically shift between drive and reverse to handle parking lot maneuvers and multi-point turns. Well, hey, I say thank you, Tesla, because this is just in time for me to get my stockless Model 3. You S and X folks out there have been enjoying this one for a while, those of you with the new S or X. And I'll say, I don't really hear a lot of complaints about this feature, so it must From that, I I can reasonably deduce that it must work pretty well most of the time. And so I'm eager to try this out and report back to all of you after I get my new car, especially since a lot of you will likely be diving into this pool, whether you want to or not, with the refreshed Project Juniper Model Y next year. Moving on down the list, there's we're just getting warmed up on this on the feature list for this holiday software update. Set Arrival energy at destination. Tesla says you can now set a preferred battery charge level for when you arrive at your destination. Another one that gets a big yes. This is another long requested feature being delivered by the Tesla team. This is huge for trip planning. For instance, if you're going to be somewhere, if your destination is somewhere that doesn't necessarily have easy or reliable or fast destination charging, and you need to sort of plan your quote-unquote escape ahead of time, if you will. So, great feature here. Next, you can search along the route with estimated detour times. Tesla says, when navigating, search results are now filtered to show options along your route and estimated detour times. So, another great navigation update here. Uh, I'll say this. I'm going to take a quick second. It's time now for one of my patented pull back to the 10,000 foot view moments. I couldn't help myself when I read about this because I I thought to myself, I actually, I put myself in 
my cousin Pat, may he rest in peace, and, and those of you that are OG Model S owners, I put myself in your shoes and I thought, well, boy, imagine, you know, you get this update, this holiday software update, Imagine that you're an old school Tesla owner since those early Model S days, 2012, 2013, 2014, when there was almost nothing in the cars in the way of navigation features. I mean, it had a basic directions, you know, you put in a put in an address and the car would guide you there, but that was about it. And now there's stuff like supercharger stops being automatically added to your route if you won't have enough charge to reach your destination on one one shot. There's, there's just a million things. The owner experience just gets better and better when you own a Tesla. Next, speaking of navigation, precipitation map and weather at your destination. Tesla says, view precipitation directly on the map to check the weather at your destination. So, Hey, more weather data is always helpful. I will take it. The next one, a big new safety feature, and that's rear cross-traffic alert. Tesla describes it as, when in reverse, your vehicle will alert you if it detects a pedestrian or vehicle crossing behind you. An audible warning will also play if a potential collision is detected. So this is another huge one in this update because this is a safety feature. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. This is a big safety feature. And think about that. Your car is downloading a new, very practical, very useful safety feature for free over the air. And and it's just, I love it. It's just, it's so awesome. That's one of the best parts of Tesla ownership is this kind of thing. I feel like, in fact, that there was a Ride the Lightning hotline caller very recently that was asking for this one. So whoever you are, you got it. I love this. Uh, Moving on to a block of Cybertruck specific things. There's Cybertruck custom wraps and license plate customization. So you can personalize your Cybertruck, Cybertruck, pardon me, avatar, meaning on your screen, with a custom wrap and license plate. Use one of many preloaded designs or create and upload custom ones using a USB flash drive. Details on template and instructions will be published via GitHub. Very cool to, of Tesla here to see that so many Cybertruck owners have been wrapping their trucks that they're adding this nice little feature in in order to let owners upload their own custom wrap for their truck for the in-car version of their truck. It's just a fun little thing. They didn't have to do it, but they did. It's super cool of the Tesla software team to add this one. Next, Cybertruck rear camera improvements. Tesla says the rear camera feed is now larger and you can pinch to zoom in or out. Hey, another great feature, more functionality, more usability for the Tesla that has the biggest center screen in it. Two more for Cybertruck. The rear arcade now available in Cybertruck, meaning you can play games from the back seat while you're cruising around. And this is another one. Hey, just glad to have the Cybertruck catch up to the rest of the fleet. And we know, I mean, lots of kids are riding in the second rows of Cybertrucks, so this will be a most welcome holiday gift for all of them. And finally, on the Cybertruck front, Cybertruck Santa Mode. Tesla describes it as, ho, 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 Santa Mode changes your Cybertruck avatar into Santa's sleigh, including reindeers, elves, and more. So again, another one that's just bringing the Cybertruck up to par with the rest of the fleet, but at least they're doing it at the exact right time of the year for this particular fun feature. Still going, we're out of the Cybertruck block, but there's plenty more to tell you about, like schedule light show from the Tesla app. As the name suggests, you can remotely schedule light shows from the Tesla app, including the two new light shows included in the holiday 2024 update. So. I'm stoked to have two more new ones, two new ones to try out because I impressed my extended family with it the last couple of years. They enjoyed it. And so, hey, it's a bonus now to be able to just do it from the app without having to get in the car. 
tune in. The, the description here is simply tune in radio on Tesla is now much better and still completely free with no setup needed. If I'm being honest, as I always am, I have never once used tune in in my car. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. I've just never used it. So I can't really comment on this one, especially since not only have I not used it, the description here just says it's much better. There's nothing specific about that. So I, I will say that the wording on this and the timing makes me feel like it's Tesla's attempted apology for taking away the, fle- the free slacker radio from everybody. But hey, if you use TuneIn, it apparently just got better. And that's always a good thing. Next, a new game called Boomerang Foo. Slice and dice your friends with boomerangs in this action-packed party game. So another new video game for your car here. It's certainly not a big name like Fallout Shelter or Cuphead, but hey, I'll give it a try. Why not? I Video games are my job. They are one of my hobbies and passions, so... I will check out Boomerang Foo in my car once I get the software update. Uh, The next one, Fart on Contact. Prank your friends with each new bum detection. Sit happens. S-I-T, sit happens is how Tesla phrased that. Uh, I am 1,000% going to prank my daughter with this one, my 13-year-old daughter. Uh, I will say the fart mode was always a big hit with the kids' carpool back when I was driving the carpool uh, the the last couple of school years before this one. And I I couldn't help but laugh when when I read this because it just made me think, I would love to be a fly on the wall in the meeting at Tesla where this was suggested. Like, they're sitting around, they're talking about stuff they want to do, they've got a roadmap, they've got a priority list, and there's just one person stands up and says... Our metrics show, well, like the manager, whoever the, whoever's leading the meeting is like, our metrics show that our customers love fart mode. So how can we make it better, team? And then another guy stands up and says, raises his hand. What if we add a whoopee cushion option? And then the manager says, damn it, Simmons, that's brilliant. Big raise for you. And that's, that's how I imagine that conversation going in my head. Uh, anyway, here's a, a quick list of the rest of the stuff because we've hit all the highlights now here's the rest there's a few more to mention for you you can adjust the passenger seat from controls so tesla says the new seats control panel allows you to adjust the position of the unoccupied passenger seat including second row seats then they mention a maintenance summary you can now view and track maintenance items from your vehicle's touchscreen And then there is a a final just dumping ground list of other minor updates. And here they are. Rear screen remote now allows video playback controls in drive. In other words, when the car's in motion. Find nearby parking at your destination or any point of interest. When reversing, music volume can automatically lower to reduce distractions. That's a nice one. Navigation will dynamically route around road closures. Always a plus. Sentry mode. Mobile app notification if the door handle is pulled. I like that one. So if some clown is trying to get in your car, they're, you know, there's, it's, it's clearly never good if, if your car is locked and someone that you don't know is pulling on your door handle. So I'm glad that the app will now notify you with a push notification if the car detects that. And then energy app consumption page for Model S, Model X, and Cybertruck. Vehicles without premium connectivity can now see traffic on their navigation route. Love that. Love seeing the folks that aren't subscribing to premium connectivity get more features and functionality. And finally, When navigating to a supercharger, upon arrival, you will be notified on the touchscreen of any stalls that are currently out of service. Now, you may know this information's already there, but it sounds like, again, I don't have the update yet, and I haven't pulled up to a a, a supercharger with this update installed. It sounds like that they're going to just more prominently tell you 
which stalls are out of order if you pull up to a supercharger that has one or more out of order stalls. Overall, what a great, great holiday update this year. I mean, they all have been, really, if we think about it. In fact, I mean, Tesla has set a very, very high bar for themselves with these, with these annual holiday updates. And in my eyes, they have continually met or raised that bar every year. There's been something great every year in these holiday updates. And I think I can speak on behalf of all of you for any Tesla software team employees that may be listening to this. It, again, is so, so cool that we continue to get upgrades, improvements, and features added in our cars on a regular basis completely for free. It's just so awesome. So this week's Patreon poll was on this topic, and it asked you simply, what was your favorite part of the 2024 holiday software update? I think this poll this week had the most poll choices I've ever had, and I'm very grateful that Patreon doesn't limit the number of choices in a poll because there were, well, I'm not going to count them, but it was well over a dozen here just looking at it. And so as you'd imagine, with a dozen plus choices, the votes were scattered around, but there was a clear winner. And that clear winner with over 250 votes in the poll, thank you to everybody that took the time to stop by and vote at patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. A reminder, the new poll goes up each week, usually on Tuesday evenings, and you do not need to be backing me or supporting me on Patreon in any way in order to vote in each week's poll. It's totally free. Just stop by, cast your vote on each week's poll question. The top vote getter out of all these choices with 33% of the vote was Apple Watch support. So clearly this was indeed a long requested feature from many people. Uh, The next one is 18% was the set arrival energy at destination. Love that. And then at 14% was the new safety feature rear cross traffic alert. And then after that, everything else is single digits. Save dash cam and sentry mode clips to phone, 9%. The Sirius XM app for Model 3 Y and Cybertruck, 8%, and then it pretty much falls off the table after that. So, again, thanks to all of you for taking the time to vote in this week's poll. Before I get to the rest of this week's Tesla news, and there is plenty, I want to remind you about the Climate Exchange Raffle benefiting a great cause. If you want to win any Tesla configured however you want, and yes, that does include the Cybertruck, For just $250, that sounds good, right? And as a bonus, you have your raffle entry go to a great cause. Of course you want that. That sounds pretty fun. So if that's of interest, the Climate Exchange Raffle, which, by the way, all of you helped raise money for last year, thank you very much, is back for its ninth year and proceeds benefit a small nonprofit doing really important work for our planet by working hard to help states pass climate policies. Even better, if you win, Climate Exchange also pays all of the fees and taxes on the car, meaning you get your dream Tesla with zero out-of-pocket cost. This is the most bang-for-your-buck of any EV raffle on the internet. Here's further proof. There's also an early bird drawing of 10 grand being held on January 3rd, 2025. And even if you win that, you're still eligible for the grand prize drawing, pardon me, on February 28th. Even better, Climate Exchange is giving away two additional cash prizes, $12,500 for their second place winner and $7,500 for their third place winner during that February drawing. Last year's winner picked out a red Model X plaid fully customized with a yoke and FSD, and I'm told he's living his best life driving it down in Florida. Tickets for this have sold out early just about every year, so don't wait. Get yours today. Go to carbonraffle.org slash RTL to get your tickets and start daydreaming about how you'll configure your dream Tesla, or click on the link in the episode description. That's C-A-R-B-O-N-R-A-F-F-L-E dot O-R-G slash RTL. And then, of course, my friends at Accelerate Auto. 
and their X-Care extended warranty option for your Tesla. They continue to offer that wonderful option for everybody out there. I've got that three-year, 40,000-mile plan on mine, which I guess I'm about almost halfway into so far. It's good to have that peace of mind. If the extended warranty sounds good to you, either on the whole car, just kind of extending what Tesla already gives you, or you want to also add a battery and drivetrain extended warranty, or just do a battery and drivetrain policy. You can do any of that, all of that. That's what's awesome about Xcare is the flexibility. So there is a $100 discount if you order, because you heard it on this podcast, if you pick up a policy. To get that, use the discount code LIGHTNING. And if you're wondering, well, where do I use that discount code, Ryan? The website is accelerateauto.com slash xcare. That's X-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O dot com slash X-C-A-R-E. And yes, the link to that is in the episode description as well. Don't forget that discount code LIGHTNING for $100 off your purchase. Getting back to the Tesla news, the holiday software update was not the only big software update that started rolling out this week. FSD version 13, in fact, specifically 13.2, has begun rollout. Here are the release notes. I'll read you those real quick. FSD supervised version 13 upgrades every part of the end-to-end driving network. Includes 36 hertz full resolution AI4 video inputs, native AI4 inputs and neural network architectures, 4.2x data scaling, 5x training compute scaling enabled by the Cortex cluster, reduced photon to control latency by double by 2x, speed profiles on both city streets and highways, start FSD supervised from park with the touch of a button, integrated unpark, reverse, and park capabilities, improved reward predictions for collision avoidance, improved camera cleaning, redesigned controller for smoother, more accurate tracking, dynamic routing around road closures, which displays them along an affected route when they are detected by the fleet, upcoming improvements, 3x model size scaling, 3x model context length scaling, audio inputs for better handling of emergency vehicles, improved reward predictions for navigation, improvements to false braking and slower driving in parking lots. That'll be a nice one. Support for destination options, including pulling over, parking in a spot, driveway or garage, efficient representation of maps and navigation inputs, and improved handling of camera occlusions. So hopefully we see fewer of those cameras. FSD may be degraded because the one or more cameras are occluded and it's just the sun at the wrong angle. Well, for me, I would say out of this nice list, uh, the future stuff is great, but of the present stuff that's going to roll out or is rolling out now in version 13.2, the biggest plainly obvious piece for me is FSD can now unpark, park, and reverse. That is going to be just really, really awesome. I mean, that's really kind of completing the last pieces of the puzzle, right? It's like it's like they've been building the puzzle. I don't know. When you build a, when you do a puzzle, I, I don't know about you. I like to start with the borders and then work my way in. But it's as if Tesla, in, in this silly analogy, has been building the FSD puzzle starting from the middle and working their way out. Now they're getting to those edge cases, right? The, the edges and the edges include parking, unparking, and soon, not in 13.2, garages, driveways, just awesome stuff. But uh, I have to say, and I, I recognize that there are a ton of hardware three owners out there. I, I seem to have timed my purchase of a new Tesla well in the sense of now is a great time to get a hardware four car because it is going to be really interesting to see how long it takes for hardware three cars to get this one. Because the release notes specifically call out AI4. So I I can't help but wonder, is the time delay between AI4 cars getting FSD updates and AI3 cars getting that same update, 
is that is that time gap only going to increase now with each advancing release as Tesla continues to make more and more progress? And and once again, it's I think it's fair to ask the question with each of these releases, especially a major release, we're going a full numbered release from 12. Dot whatever we're on right now, 12.56, I think, 12.5.6, to 13, is how far can hardware three go? And if it comes to a point where it can't go any further, when, how quickly, I guess would be the question, how quickly, as mine of the future service dog starts chomping on a squeak toy behind me if you're hearing weird noises, when will Tesla acknowledge how how quickly will tesla officially acknowledge that hardware 3 cannot go any further if in fact that point is reached for now though it is super awesome to see fsd version 13 start to roll out next this week sexy stalks have been announced as a an aftermarket accessory from enhance makers of the fairly popular sexy buttons accessory and by sexy i mean s3xy in reference of course to the tesla fleet here is the product description for those of you who might be interested in adding stocks to your current stockless tesla or maybe you plan to buy a future stockless tesla and i'll just note up front here i am not affiliated with these guys in any way i'm choosing to mention this because i think it's newsworthy because i know a lot of you out there do not like the idea that stocks have been deleted on the newest Tesla. So I think there's some newsworthiness here, which is why I wanted to mention it. The product description is, the sexy stocks are a great addition to every Tesla model without turn signal indicators or the gear shifting lever. They stick to the side of the steering wheel column without requiring the steering wheel to be taken apart. Through the sexy app, you can configure up to 18 different actions for each lever based on your gear, making them truly unique. The sexy stocks are powered by a CR2032 battery, which will last at least a year with regular use and can be replaced in seconds without taking the lever apart. All of our products receive over-the-air updates with new features and improvements. If this sounds interesting to you, the pre-order price because these aren't out yet. I'll give you the release dates in a second. The pre-order price is $343.69, which is a 20% discount off of the regular price once, once these hit the market. And when will that be? Well, there are two release dates. For the three fresh, the new Model 3, they're coming out on February 24th of 2025. And for the new S and X, it'll be a couple months later, April 28th. 2025. If you're interested, you can check it out at ENH Auto, as in enhance, but enhauto.com slash product slash stocks if you'd like to take a look and learn more. And I will be eager to hear the customer reviews on these. If they're good, and hopefully they are, but I will say in full transparency, I, I genuinely have no idea if they would be, but I'm optimistic because the sexy buttons that this company makes are very well regarded in the community. But if they're good, then this will definitely bring peace of mind for those of you who are looking at getting the new Model 3 or the Juniper Model Y refresh that really don't like the idea of turn signal buttons on the steering wheel. And this is, this is a topic that's come up on our monthly Patreon Zoom Hangouts on multiple occasions. It is... It is definitely something that a lot of people feel strongly about, and they're not wrong to feel that way. It is definitely, a, a, you can have a very friendly debate about whether or not Tesla is, is decreasing the safety of their vehicles with these. Some people would, order, would argue that they, they are not doing that, but others would argue that they are. I think the point is, good on the enhanced the enhance auto people here for offering this as what seems like a pretty well put together, pretty smartly thought out aftermarket accessory. So uh, you've got a choice here coming up 
as of February, late February, for the three fresh and presumably whenever the juniper comes out, these same exact uh, stalks for the three fresh will be compatible with the juniper. And then in April for S and X, you know, the fact is, regardless of how you feel about it, and I'm going to be diving in here very quickly when I get my new Model 3 performance. I've already said I it doesn't the buttons don't bother me at all in the Cybertruck where there's there's the uh, the steer by wire and thus the wheel never has to go you never have to go hand over hand. So I may feel differently about it when I get this new Model 3 performance. We shall see, but Tesla's made its choice, right? Like they're not walking it back at this point. Tesla's made its choice, but at least now you have a choice with regard to stocks, thanks to the enhanced folks. Hopefully this product turns out to be a good one. And a couple more stories for you this week. The first of those is that Elon Musk has been denied his $56 billion pay package once again by a Delaware judge. I saw this written up on Tesla Roddy, who writes, Tesla CEO Elon Musk was once again denied the $56 billion pay package by Delaware Chancellor Kathleen McCormick, who previously ruled the sum should not be paid to Musk. Tesla shareholders voted after the initial rejection of the massive pay package that was awarded to Musk for achieving several, that's actually, I got to correct Tesla Roddy there, that he achieved them all achieving all of the tranches related to company growth to award the CEO with the money. McCormick, uh, Mina, can you not chew my desk, please? Mina, don't. Come on, pups. That's a wood desk. It's already, you've already chewed it. Please stop. Oh, my goodness. Um, Anyway, getting back to it. McCormick once again denied the pay package. This comes 11 months after the first rejection. The pay package was challenged by shareholder Richard J. Tornetta, who owned only a handful of Tesla shares. McCormick ruled in January that Musk's, quote, unfathomable sum was unfair to shareholders. However, it appears the weight of one shareholder and one chancellor outweighs that of a majority of Tesla shareholders who voted overwhelmingly this past summer to award Musk the money once again. However, this past Monday, Chancellor McCormick once again said Musk should not be awarded the sum. Tesla responded, saying, quote, A Delaware judge just overruled a supermajority of shareholders who own Tesla and who voted twice to pay Elon Musk what he's worth. This ruling, if not overturned, means that judges and plaintiffs' lawyers run Delaware companies rather than their rightful owners, the shareholders, end quote. Tesla Roddy continues that is by saying, perhaps what is most baffling about the ruling by McCormick is the fact that Tesla will be forced to pay $345 million in fees to lawyers who represented Tornetta and other shareholders. The lawyers at one time requested more than $5.5 billion from the case, and they wanted it in the form of Tesla stock. Those lawyers said in a statement via the New York Times, quote, We hope that the chancellor's well-reasoned decision will end this matter for the shareholders of Tesla, end quote. They also said they are looking forward to defending the judgment if Tesla decides to appeal. The company has said it will be appealing McCormick's decision. Well, my two cents on this, it's tough. This is a, it's always tough when you get into the world of Elon because I recognize that Elon Musk, with his own chosen words and actions, has invited a lot of polarizing opinions about him as both a person and as the CEO of Tesla, particularly over the last several years. Some people love him now and used to not like him. Some people used to love him and now they don't. And some people are somewhere in between. But one thing you can be sure of is that practically anyone you meet, regardless of whether or not they're a Tesla owner, anyone you meet has something to say about Elon Musk. He's become that much of a public figure, a, if you will, if you'll sort of pardon the, the uh, electric pun or uh, analogy here, he, he's become something of a lightning rod. I think no matter how you feel about him, you'd probably agree with that. 
But you have to set aside that lightning rod personality in this case, because this case isn't about who he is as a person or as the CEO. This case is actually from back before he kind of became this more controversial person. It, this case is about past performance. It's not about present value or future value. It is about past performance. So regardless of how you feel about his present day value to the company as its leader or his future value to the company as, as its leader, this pay package, this lawsuit was about what he has done in the past. And he has achieved every one of those lofty goals set out in this agreement back in 2018 when the judge initially uh, rejected this earlier this year. You may remember I talked about it on the podcast. I, I went back and I read you a couple of old media stories on this pay package from when it was first introduced from, I think, I think one of the stories I read was from the New York Times and others that, that called it, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have those stories in front of me right now, but they all called it absurd, saying this will never happen. The, the, the goals on this are insane. It'll never happen. This is crazy. But it did. It did happen. And so for that reason, I personally think, and you may disagree, and that's okay. We can, we can politely disagree, but I personally think he should be paid his money in this case. Shareholders have voted for it twice, both times, as Tesla noted. I mean, they use the term supermajority, but both times it was over 70% of share of voting shareholders who approved it. I think, you know, whether you want to use the term supermajority, we, we would call those a landslide, but we'd call both of them landslide numbers in any, in any political contest. So, We'll see what happens with this when it inevitably goes to probably the Delaware State Supreme Court and perhaps beyond that. So this, this saga is not over yet. And finally this week, one more story of note. Some of you sent this in to me. This has definitely been making the rounds. There has been a reported pause in Cybertruck production. The story initially came from Business Insider, who said in part... This past Monday, Tesla notified workers at the Austin factory where it assembles the Cybertruck to take the next three days off, according to a memo viewed by Business Insider. Quote from that memo, On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, December 3rd, 4th, and 5th, you do not need to report to work, the memo said. Workers were told they'd still receive eight hours of pay for each day they'd been scheduled to work. The email said workers would return to the production, the Cybertruck production line on Friday, December 6th, which is today as I record this. Tesla also said some workers wouldn't follow the adjusted schedule and those workers would be notified separately. It's unclear why Tesla has temporarily changed the scheduling for the Cybertruck assembly line. Factory workers on the Cybertruck line said their schedule had been inconsistent since late October. Four workers told Business Insider that several times after arriving at work, they'd either been sent home or given additional training exercises or cleaning duties to fill their scheduled work hours. At least one worker expressed frustration with the schedule changes. Quote, When I started at Tesla, you could expect to get overtime pay. Now I feel lucky to get 40 hours, said the worker on the Cybertruck line who'd been with the company for several years. Well, that's the Business Insider piece, and this got picked up all over major media outlets. You may have had loved ones or friends or coworkers sending you the link to this story, despite the fact that every automaker goes through this for various reasons, and I would call that the Tesla tax in the media, I think, would be a, a fair way to put it, which... That tax is arguably doubled when it comes to anything related to the Cybertruck. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to add here is that there appears to be another piece of this story that, of course, wasn't widely reported. Joe Techmeyer, and Joe, as every time I say your name, I, I fear that I got it wrong, your last name, but Joe is the 
Giga Texas drone flyover maestro. He does it all day, every day, and, and he, he's, he learns a lot, and he's passed along a lot of information to the community because of his, his, his hawk eye, his, uh, his eye in the sky over Giga Texas. Well, Joe posted on X that the stoppage is, quote, related to getting the boring company tunnel ready for operation. Now, you may remember I told you about this just a week or two ago, I think maybe, well, last week was the vacation episode, so I guess maybe two episodes ago it must have been, where Tesla's building with the Boring Company a tunnel under the road, the public road, from the factory under the road to their outbound lot on the other side of that public road to more quickly and easily facilitate vehicles coming out of the plant into the outbound lot and getting shipped off. So here's what I'm thinking. If we take both Joe and Business Insider at face value here, we have to acknowledge that it's not a zero-sum game. It can be both things, both what Joe said and what Business Insider was talking about. Particularly when Business Insider, I will say, they had that extra bit of reporting. They talked to several employees. The, the one employee said that schedules have, have been wonky in the last month or so with not all of their time at work being spent on the production line. And so I'm inclined to think that both of these things could be factors here, that there could be hiccups in the production line, but also that they held things up to get this tunnel done and then have smoother, more efficient operations after that. And I'll pause right here to say, too, that it's awesome and the right thing to do that Tesla did pay those workers who they told not to come in. That's good on the company. That's what they should do. That's what they did. And I want to acknowledge that. Now, getting back to the rest of this, I will st uh, still say that it's certainly not ideal for Tesla to be pausing their production for three days in Q4 for any reason when they're trying to put together their best quarter ever just to reach, just to scrape by and get over the finish line on their 2024 delivery goal. And it is also certainly undeniable that the take rate, we've all seen it, the take rate on the 2 million plus reservations for the Cybertruck was a lot lower than any of us, I think probably including Tesla, thought or expected. I don't, want, I don't want to get too reactionary about this, but at the end of the day, if there are any production, not even production, demand issues is what it would be. It wouldn't really be production. It would be its demand. If, if demand is such that Tesla is totally comfortable with pausing production in Q4 for three days, even if it's in part to get the tunnel done, I think it all comes back to one thing, and that's price. Not that I'm stating any grand revelation here. I mean, it's it's certainly the big the big thing that's that's out there with the Cybertruck. It's the Cybertruck is being hit with the double whammy since it went into production of the individual seventy five hundred dollar point of sale federal tax credit not being available on it for some reason that we don't know. The government hasn't told us. Tesla hasn't told us. And then the other part two of the double whammy is prices being significantly higher than they were when Tesla announced the truck and started taking reservations for it five years ago. And yes, I know that a lot of external macro things out of Tesla's control have changed in those five years. But the bottom line is that people put their $100 reservation down on a truck that they thought would start at 40 grand and they thought would top out at 70 grand without FSD, of course, but 70 grand with 500 miles of range for that 70 grand. I mean, just for the thought exercise, I want you to do me a favor. Let's all right now just stop and think about, just for a second, if, te if Tesla had successfully delivered a $70,000 Cyber Beast tri-motor truck that could do zero to 60 in under three seconds and go 500 miles on a charge. Think about right now if, they, if that's the truck that, had, that they'd been delivering 
for the last year, first in foundation series form and for the last couple of months in general production form. If that's the truck that they had delivered and then throw in the single motor truck as well. I know there's, they're not currently producing that, but let's say that that was going to happen and that that truck was coming. And then, I mean, might as well finish the thought exercise. If the, think of the, if the dual motor was currently available for the original price, which now I'm, I'm blanking on it. I think it was, was it, it was 50, I believe it was 40 for the single 50 for the dual and 70 for the try. I think, I believe I've, I'm remembering the, the correct price on the dual there. So just think about that. If Tesla had delivered on those price points and the range, now in fairness, they actually over delivered a little bit on the dual motor range. So we give, I certainly want to give credit there. But so many people were so pumped about that 500 miles of range, particularly because it was a truck, right? That they'd be able to tow things and have pretty good range, even while towing, have a good 200, maybe 250 miles of range with a 500 mile range battery. So if they had delivered on those price points and on that 500 mile range, then I have to believe that they would not be sending workers home, that they'd have a quite a long line still of customers just beating down their door to get those trucks. And, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to blame Tesla here. It's, they could not, nobody could have foreseen the macro events that happened in the world and had the downstream effects on the supply chain between the time that they announced the truck in late 2019 to the time that it went into production in late 2023. But at the end of the day, again, not trying to assign any blame, but the reality of the situation is at the end of the day, Tesla created the expectation in their customers' minds that there was going to be a $40,000 truck, a $50,000 truck, and a $70,000 truck that could smoke a Lamborghini off the line and go 500 miles on a charge. And I just, that, that expectation, I think, is coming back to bite them now. I really think that's the driving force behind the reservation list not lasting anywhere close to as long as any of us thought it was going to. If the prices were lower or the $7,500 point of sale tax credit was there, I think things might be different. Meaning even if the prices were the prices they are today, but that 7,500 was there, meaning that you could get that dual motor cyber truck for 72.5 out the door, I think things might be a little bit different. Again, I'm not even asking for both of them. I mean, if there were both, if there was a $40,000 single motor that you could get for 32.5 and a 500 mile tri-motor cyber beast that you could get for 62.5 with the with the point of sale tax credit, that would be amazing. I I probably would not have turned that down. I would not have been able to to say no to that, even even with the awesome deal that I'm getting on the Model 3 Performance right now. But I think either one of those, lower prices or the tax credit, would have moved the needle significantly. And and that's why, and I know I've said this recently, I think the Cybertruck's going to see a price drop sooner than anybody, or at least I'll speak for myself, sooner than I could have possibly guessed or expected. I will save my exact prediction on that for my annual New Year's prediction show that's coming up really in just a few weeks. In fact, what is that? That's going to be one, two, yeah, three shows away from now. So I'll be doing that pretty soon. But that's where I think this is heading. Everybody, and I'll note too, I want to be clear, everybody that's bought a Cybertruck seems to absolutely love it. I see it in the community. I hear from you guys directly. I have my own experience from being lucky enough to, to have a Cybertruck for three days when Emmett was kind enough to let me borrow his back in February. I mean, I fell in love with it, having it for three days. I absolutely did. It's Everybody that's bought one seems to absolutely love it. The product is phenomenal. I just think that the price situation is an issue on the Cybertruck. Again, it world events were what they were, but 
the reality is people thought this was going to be a forty, fifty, or seventy thousand dollar truck, and it's pretty far past that. So we'll see what happens in the coming year with regard to Cybertruck pricing. That's everything I've got for you in a very, very busy week of Tesla news. But before I get to your phone calls in the Ride the Lightning hotline, I wanted to quickly mention this week's lightning round mini episode exclusively on Patreon. For those of you kind enough to be supporting my efforts here with Ride the Lightning on Patreon at the $10 tier or higher. If you are doing that, you get those weekly lightning round mini episodes and you get ad-free episodes and early access to each week's episodes, uh, each episode, pardon me. This week's lightning round was my must-have accessories for my new Model 3 performance. I went through them all in detail, why I want them, why I want to get them, tallied up all the prices. I even had a spreadsheet. I'm hoping that maybe that'll be helpful to any of you who are going to be purchasing a new Tesla. Maybe you're getting a new Model 3 this fall or a Y, or you're, you're going to be getting the Juniper Model Y next year. So check that out at patreon.com slash Podcast if you're interested. And if you're not already supporting me on Patreon, you can go to that very same website, patreon.com slash Podcast, and you can join the Patreon. The support tiers start at just five bucks a month. You'd be super helping me and my family out. If you choose to join the Patreon, five bucks a month will get you early access to each week's episode and ad free episodes as well. I've got a holiday promo going right now 20% off your first month with code 2645F, as in future. So check it out, patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. Again, the most popular tier is that $10 per month tier where you get early access, you get ad-free, and you get all of those lightning round episodes. There's 123 of them now. So there's a whole bunch of extra content up there if that sounds good to you. Just make sure if you are going to join the Patreon, do it via the website that I've mentioned a couple times. Don't do it through the Patreon iOS app because they just through because of the App Store, Apple, they had to change it so the Basically, the App Store fee gets passed on to you only if you sign up through there, though. So just go to any website, even if it's on an iPhone, just don't use their app to sign up. You can download the app after you sign up and then uh, go from there. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. Time for your phone calls in the Ride the Lightning hotline. A reminder that if you've got a question, comment, or discussion topic for the podcast, I welcome and invite you to call in and potentially be featured on an upcoming episode. There are two easy ways to send in your calls. Number one, you can use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software to record your question. All I ask is that you please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many callers each week as possible. Email that recording to me at teslapodcast at gmail.com. Or you can take that same 90 second or less question and call in and leave a message on the Ride the Lightning hotline. It's a toll free number you can dial anytime. That number is 1 888 989 8752. Again, that's 1 888 989 TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. We kick it off with James from Anderson, Indiana. Hey, Ryan, this is James from Anderson, Indiana, calling again because they famously leave horrible voicemails. So here we go again. My question, the uh, is there a way to increase the download, like the update download speed to a Tesla? We've got Starlink on our semi, and that's what we that's how we download the updates to our Teslas. We just park next to it and connect, and the uh, in motion satellite really works well. And it you know it's usually two or three hundred megabytes per second. Um, so yeah, if you have any idea on how to increase the speed on this, uh, taking forever. Um, and you were not wrong on a one Tesla household turning into two. Because 
shortly after I bought my Model Y, wife got a six over three fresh. Yeah, long range version and it fantastic. So anyway, thanks very much. Have a great day. James, first of all, congratulations on the Quicksilver 3 Fresh. As you heard me say when I shared my new Tesla news with all of you a couple episodes ago, Quicksilver did tempt me a little bit, and it would have absolutely been my choice if Tesla hadn't swapped out Multicoat Red for Ultra Red. I love my 2018 Model 3's Multicoat Red paint, but I wouldn't buy another Model 3 Performance, even the refresh, in the exact same color. I, that, that I would not have done. But Ultra Red is different, and that one I find beautiful. It's too tempting for me, but that Quicksilver is indeed super nice. Anyway, I am sorry that after exchanging that little pleasantry with you that I don't have a better or more constructive answer to your call. I don't actually know to be completely honest with you. And I too have been frustrated by slow download speeds on eagerly awaited updates, even though I actually installed a Wi-Fi repeater in my garage for two specific purposes. This was about three, four months ago, maybe. One was to make sure that my Tesla had the strongest possible Wi-Fi connection. And two was to make sure that my hydro rowing machine that I love, my that's my primary form of exercise. It's down in the garage. I wanted that to have the strongest possible internet connection. It doesn't seem to matter with the Tesla though, sadly, as you noted. So I'll put this one out to the Ride the Lightning community. If anybody has a suggestion or recommendation for upping download speeds in the car for updates, please call in and let me know so that James, myself, and probably lots of other folks out there can learn and benefit from your knowledge. But thank you, James, and thank you in advance to any listeners out there who might be able to help out on this one. My next caller is Jason from Texas. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Ryan, it's Jason from Texas. I recently called about getting supercharger status info, and you recommended trying supercharger.info. I appreciate the recommendation as it gave me the info I needed. Uh, Separate subject, Uh, I've been thinking a lot about the cyber cab. Our family lives out of town, and the closest grocery store is 30 minutes away. That means that if we forget the milk, we can either go without or spend a one-hour round trip to get it. When the new cyber cab comes out, it would be great to have a way to interface with the grocery store's curbside delivery so that you can just send the car and not have to go yourself. This would also apply for folks who work in town. If I know that I get off at 5, I can set up a series of curbside orders between 4 and 5 p.m. so that my car arrives back to me with my grocery shopping done and I can just head home. Anyway, I know we're several years away from this, but it would be great if that kind of integration could work. Have a great day. I love this idea, Jason. Theoretically, there's nothing stopping this. I mean, I'm no software engineer, as all of you know, but on the interface side, I think it would just be like an API handshake between the Tesla network and the grocery stores app, right? I mean, on the store side... It could allow the store employee to unlock the rear trunk lift gate of the cyber cab when they've got the groceries and they're ready to load up your items. And then once that hatch is closed, they can confirm on their app that the car is loaded and then the cyber cab could depart for your house. I think this is just one of so, so many potentially awesome ideas for this car. And I love that you called in with that great idea. Thank you very much, Jason. I do appreciate it. And I've just got time for one more call this week. It is from Evan in St. Louis. Hi, Ryan. This is Evan in St. Louis calling about the Tesla $500 referral program. On Tuesday the 26th, I got a notice at about 2.20 in the afternoon that a friend of mine in the neighborhood had picked up his Tesla that he had used my referral code. And $500 had been added to my, um, my account. I'm thinking, great, that's awesome. What was not awesome was almost exactly five hours later, I get another email from Tesla that says, we have decided to double the referral program award from $500 to $1,000, which I'm sure you're aware of. So I'm thinking, oh, that's great. I wonder if they, you know, since I 
friend of mine took delivery today. I wonder if they actually changed my reward to $1,000. So I went into my account and I looked, but no, 500 bucks. So I miss doubling the $500 by like who knows how many hours. I I think this is a pretty crummy thing um, for Tesla to do. And I'm not complaining. Like it's very gracious of them to reward people that refer customers, but you know, to not give it to the people who took delivery the day they changed the reward, um, I think is something that should probably be remedied. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Oh, and congrats on the new ride. Thank you very much, Evan. I am getting excited now. It's getting closer. But to your call, I empathize with you here. Though, if it makes you feel any better, you didn't miss it by a few hours. It's actually baked in with the order. So... It had been locked in since your friend placed their order. But I hear you, though. Believe me, I hear you. It still stings because, hey, having $1,000 in Tesla credit to use on service or merch or whatever you want is certainly a heck of a lot better than $500. And we've seen it a million times, though, and that is Tesla moves very, very fast. And sometimes when they do that, it's awesome, like, say, a price drop on a car that happens after you order, but before you take delivery. But sometimes it can feel really bad when they move really quickly, such as in a situation like yours. Still, the good news is at least any additional referrals that you might get will net you that $1,000. And by the way, uh, thank you on the congrats on the new car. In fact, as it pertains to the topic of your call, I actually was faced with a choice myself. Do I cancel my order and reorder with the $1,000 loyalty bonus instead of $500, which means I would net an extra $250 off the car since canceling my order would forfeit my non-refundable $250 order fee. But I decided that since my 0% financing was already approved, my trade-in offer was locked, although funny story with that, we can't find the title to my wife's 20-year-old Mini Cooper, which is understandable. I mean, that's 20 years is a long time. Uh, And so we had to apply for a replacement title from the DMV, but that takes a while. And I don't, it it might take, in fact, there's a good chance it wouldn't happen this month. So I'm just going to have to sell that car separately and not worry about the trade-in. But at least 20-year-old Mini Cooper wasn't, it was only going to get a $700 of trade-in anyway. So no, not like a, 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 purchase altering situation there was the good news anyway yeah my financing locked in i just decided not to mess with it but if if there had been any more money on the line then i probably would have gone to the trouble or inconvenience of canceling my order and then ordering again to get that additional benefit but anyway evan thank you so much for your call super appreciate it thank you to everybody that kindly took the time to call in i always appreciate your phone calls i think this segment of the podcast makes this podcast better because then it's, I'm hearing from you. It's not just me talking at you. We get to hear from fellow owners, fellow enthusiasts, and I think that's a good thing. So if anybody else out there has a good Tesla question, comment, discussion topic, something that's been on your mind as it pertains to all things Tesla, feel free to call in with it. I gave you the call-in instructions at the top of this segment. Now to tell you a little bit about What's going on with me and my personal Tesla adventure? So my two-week hold on my new Model 3 performance order lifted right after I got back from my trip. And then I did get a new VIN pretty quickly. As expected, they took the car that I had been assigned and sold it to somebody else. And uh, so, yeah, I got a new VIN fairly quickly. But then in before I could even email my insurance company to give them that VIN and say, I'd like a policy starting on, you know, I was just going to pick like the weekend just to be safe. Like, yeah, let's get this policy started. I mean, you do have to provide proof of insurance to Tesla as part of your pre-delivery task. But uh, they that VIN disappeared from my, my order. And I guess they gave that car to somebody else. So then I was waiting a little bit longer And I had to get the trade-in removed. I told them, yep, sorry, can't find the... I was like, surely we're not the first people that have 
had this happen? And they said, well, sorry, we actually can't take the trade in without the title. So, okay, they took the trade in off of my order. So that was one less pre-delivery task I had to worry about. And on Thursday, yesterday, I got my, I guess, third and what will hopefully be final VIN. Now, the first one I had, I'm still waiting to schedule a delivery day. Uh, I doubt, given that it's late Friday night, that it's going to be this weekend, but probably sometime next, next week. I would suspect there's a there's a pretty good chance that when I sit down to record episode 489 next week, I will have taken delivery, and I'll, I'll uh, have some some fun updates to share about my first impressions with actually owning the car. But uh, just as a little, some of you may may find this interesting, the first VIN that I had, which again was now two, a little over two weeks ago, well, wait, where are we at? One, yeah, no, actually almost three weeks ago now, was a... It started with 900,000, so it was 900 something, something, something. And then, which I have to imagine means it's 1.9 million uh, of, of Fremont built Model 3s, because they, they hit a million Fremont Model 3s a while ago. So anyway, uh, 900,000. And then after that two-week hold, when I fairly quickly got assigned a second VIN, that one was 909 xxx so 9000 model 3s had been built in about that 2 week span and then just a few days later when i did get my latest vin it's 916000 so another 7000 uh cars have gone by in just a few days so i don't know if tesla is really ramping up or if the vin thing is if maybe that's not necessarily a reliable indicator of how production is going necessarily, but point is, I thought I'd share that just because I I don't often have like fresh off the line vins, so I thought well maybe some other people would find this interesting because because I did for a few minutes, but I am excited. It is getting close. At, I'm just I'm crossing my fingers and toes that I get a clean build, a great build with no paint issues, no fit and finish issues, no squeaks, no rattles. I'm just hoping that I get a great, great car because it's going to be it's going to be it for a while for me. All right, I'm going to give you an entertainment recommendation now, and this is a very full-throated endorsement from me. It's a video game this week. It's a new game, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. It's available on Xbox and PC meaning Xbox Series X or Series S, not the Xbox One. Series S, Series X, and PC. In addition, it's on Game Pass for Xbox, specifically Game Pass Ultimate uh, or Game Pass PC. If you are a PlayStation 5 owner, you can pick it up in the spring. They've just said it's coming to PS5 in spring of 2025, meaning basically it could be three months from now or six months from now or somewhere in between. But it is... Phenomenal. I think it's right now, and I don't see this changing because we're already in December. It's my personal choice for game of the year. Not that there haven't been other games, but it's it's this is so up my alley. It's a first person action adventure game. It so nails the spirit and vibe of Indiana Jones. Uh, It's it's awesome. It really feels it plays differently than any other first person game on the market because it's not a shooter at all. You can get a gun, you know, we've seen Indy with a revolver in the movies, but it's very much not a shooter. It's, there's the uh, voice actor, his name's Troy Baker. He's a pretty well-known video game voice actor. He's, he plays Indiana Jones and he does a dead-on impersonation of Raiders of the Lost Era, Raiders of the Lost Ark era Indiana Jones. So just awesome game my pick for game of the year my personal game of the year right now and i haven't even finished it yet that's how strongly i feel about it so check that out if that is of interest time now for your tesla pro tip of the week it comes from rav in canada thank you for taking my call uh i'm sitting in my car with a flat tire and here's a pro tip if you need to find your address 
on the Tesla navigation system, press your finger on your location, and then the address of exactly where you are will pop up. So you can use that for the tow truck. And another just piece of information, which is, I think, a bit asinine, is Tesla will only pay for towing back to their service center, which in my case is 150 kilometers away. They will not pay to tow the vehicle to the tire shop, which I usually use, which is just happens to be 5.2 kilometers away. Anyway, I hope this pro tip helps someone. Have a great day. Rev, I thank you very much for the pro tip, but I'm sorry to hear that it came under such unfortunate circumstances. I didn't know this one, so you have taught me something, which I do always appreciate. And it is a shame that you couldn't get to your preferred tire shop that was so much closer. I wonder what the reasoning is for that. I mean, it's your car. You should get towed wherever you want. Anyway, thank you again for the call, and I hope your tire luck improves from here. If anybody else out there has a good Tesla Pro Tip of the Week, I would love to hear it. Please send it my way. You can send it in the exact same way that you send in the regular Ride the Lightning hotline calls, which I gave you the two call-in, and me call-in methods slash instructions for a little earlier in the podcast. All right, before I go, I want to mention some friends of Ride the Lightning that can hopefully be of use to you sooner or later, starting with abstractocean.com. They make a million different great Tesla aftermarket accessories from puddle lights to the rear footwell lighting kit, which I love for the Model Y, the drop-in cup holder stabilizer, the fourth generation tempered glass screen protector that uses Gorilla Glass. So many great things, all at abstractocean.com. There is a 15% discount off of your first order waiting for you if you use the coupon code RTL Podcast at checkout. That's RTL Podcast, all one word, no spaces. The Snap Plate and the newer, stronger Snap Plate Plus are available for S3, XY, and Cybertruck. Get yours at everyamp.com slash RTL. Don't forget to use the coupon code RTL also. So just RTL for a nice little discount on top of that. This is the front license plate bracket that I recommend for your Tesla if you want or legally need to have one on your car. It'll snap on and off in seconds, but when it's on, it's on there securely. But when it comes off, it doesn't leave any unsightly anything behind. You can take it off if you're detailing the car or heading to a car show, cars and coffee, or put it back on if you're going to be going to a a parking meter, a toll road, a bridge, something like that. Again, the website, everyamp.com slash RTL. Don't forget the coupon code RTL. The snap plate is safety optimized with breakaway features to sacrifice itself in a worst case scenario like a parking accident or a car wash, while the snap plate plus is strength optimized with hardened features for maximum strength. Immaculate Reflections. Oh, I'll be visiting there very soon. In fact, after next week's show, I will be heading over with the new car, assuming I get it. <laughs> I guess I, I can't guarantee that it's going to be here then, but that is the plan. I will be taking the new Model 3 Performance over to Immaculate Reflections. I wholeheartedly encourage you, if you are in or going to be in the greater San Francisco Bay Area with your Tesla or another car in your garage that you love, bring it to Immaculate Reflections, and I promise you will leave happy when the car is done whether you're having paint correction done to get that paint finish looking as good as it possibly can, whether you're having paint protection film to protect said paint applied to maybe the front of the car, the key areas of the car, or if you're like me, the entire car. Maybe you want to do ceramic coating, which is an awesome 21st century version of traditional car wax. The thing is ceramic coating lasts five plus years. So the way to get in touch with Immaculate Reflections is to go to their website, irdetailing.com. You'll see a way to contact them through there. When you reach out, let Jeff, the owner, let him know that you're a Ride the Lightning listener and any service that you book with Immaculate Reflections, you will get the Ride the Lightning listener discount kindly and courteously extended to you. And I am grateful to Jeff for continuing to do that after all these years. 
And finally, my Patreon, I mentioned it near the top, uh, but that is the way you can choose to support the podcast if you'd like. I'd be humbled and grateful if you would. I do put a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of love, enthusiasm, and research into this podcast every single week. So if you'd like to support me, the way to do that is to go to patreon.com slash Podcast. Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Again, the support tiers start at just five bucks a month. You can really help me out for just five bucks a month. If you step up to the $10 per month, you will get, in addition to the early access and the ad-free episodes that every Patreon backer gets, if you're at that $10 per month tier, you will get the weekly lightning round bonus mini episodes as well. Not just the existing, not just the that week's one from whatever week you join, but the entire back catalog of them. And as I mentioned, there are 123 of them now. So there's quite a lot of extra content waiting for you on Patreon, should you like to join up over there. And I'll just mention one last note with the Patreon, besides that promo code that I told you about at the top. The uh, There is an option for an annual pledge if you just want to support once to have it count for the whole year. And if you are kind enough to do that, there is a 10% discount on the annual pledge if you want to do it. I mentioned my referral code at the top, but again, if you're if you're a first-time Tesla buyer, the referral perks, at least for the rest of the year, we'll see what happens come January 1st, but at least for the rest of December, the referral perks are uh, are pretty nice. $1,000 off of a Model 3 or a Model Y, or $2,000 off of a Cybertruck Model S or Model X. My referral link, order with this, is ts.la slash Ryan73014. Social media-wise, you can follow me on X or on Instagram or both. My username is the same on both, and that username is DMC underscore Ryan. You can email me anytime about Tesla-related stuff at teslapodcast at gmail.com. A big thanks to all of the top-tier Patreon backers before I go this week, starting with the Roadster in Space tier crew. Big thanks to Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Bradspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Iacovetto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Kara Weston, Robert from Near Philly, American Home Contractors, GetAmber.com, Doug Carey, Rav, and Michael Gallo. Also, a big thanks to the Maximum Plaid backers. Uh, we're actually, tomorrow as I'm recording, we've got our December group Patreon Zoom hangout. Looking forward to that one. See what's, uh, what's going on with everybody, what's on everybody's mind. So hopefully a lot of the Roadster in Space and Maximum Plaid backers will be attending that. The invites were sent out at the be actually last weekend, I think. So looking forward to, to the chat there. But in any case, huge thank you to the Maximum Plaid backers. Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from New York City, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brett Libano, Patrick Wisneski, Gil Cabrera, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley, Will Stedman, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, John Cody, Joel Sapp, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, Adam Lavoy, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, Tom Behan, Josh Pennington, John from Cream Ridge, New Jersey, Dustin Hart, Derek Finley, Charles Clement, Adam Christie, Damon Klein, Jeff Brown, Jerry Slinger, Clayton Goodfellow, and Michael Mizrahi. And finally, the grandfathered in plaid level supporters, huge thanks for your continued support to George Cassiopo, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla Owners Club of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, The Lydia Family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, 
Matt Nixon, the Tesla Owners Club of Wisconsin, Ish, not Elon Musk, Peter, and the Bear Boys of Colorado. That will wrap it up for what has been a very long episode 488 here. I hope I've used your time wisely. I'm always very conscious of that. Your time is extremely valuable, and I am very grateful that you've chosen to spend a chunk of it with me talking about all things Tesla this week. So with that, I say happy holidays to all of you now that we're officially in the holiday season. Happy electric motoring, and I'll see you back here for episode 489, same time, as always, every Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. See you soon. Elon Musk, people don't like Elon Musk. The guy founded PayPal and Tesla, and people are like, yeah, but he's a troll and a bad dad. I'm like, so was mine. He did nothing to fight climate change. <laughs> also, have you been in a Tesla? Have you been in a Tesla? My buddy let me drive his Tesla. I laughed out loud at how fast it went. Been clinically depressed my entire life, on dozens of medications, in a Tesla for 13 seconds, cured forever. <laughs> I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make, it's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.